。同学们好，老师好。Hello, everybody. It is the fourteenth of January,、uh, the feast day of some guy who was killed for his beliefs, also known as Valentine's Day. Don't know why we associate martyring somebody to death with love, but there you go.、Um, I hope you're having a wonderful Valentine's Day today.、Um, we will be practicing raise hand step forward as part of our study of the first section of Young Family Tai Chi and traditional form.、Um, I just wanted to、uh, make a quick comment about questions. So every once in a while,、uh, in the course of the conversation, I say, "Does anybody have questions?" Uh, and I know it can sound intimidating. It's like, oh, you know,、uh, you know, I don't have a well-formed question. It doesn't have to be what exactly is the position of the hand, this hand in this movement at this time. It could also be, hey, I'm confused. You didn't explain it clearly. Just say that again.、Uh, so any any questions are welcome.、Um, and so、uh, with that introduction,、uh, let me just. Give myself a slightly bigger screen. So we're going to start、uh, with standing practice the way we always do. And today、uh, I'm going to actually use a chair. We're just going to do standing practice, but we can do uh, this practice um, uh, standing, sitting, or lying down.、Uh, I've been learning about sitting ways of doing the sitting practice,、um, and so I wanted to share this with you because. It's very important、uh, when we do、uh, our Tai Chi Chan practice that we get the externals right, and then gradually, as our external shape improves, it goes to how our internal、um, energy flows, and so on. So, being comfortable is important. If in standing practice you find it really hard, and you and you're much more taken up with this hurts, that hurts, this doesn't feel right. Try sitting practice. So let me just show you sitting practice. If you want to do this standing, you know how to do that. So take a chair.、Um, ideally, it's a nice hard chair, and I'll show you it from show you this from the side. So you'll see that I've actually got a little yoga block、um, on the chair, and the reason for that is I want to be able to sit sit on my sitting bones、um, so that my knees are lower than my hips. So I I actually bring a little bit of weight up here, and I'm actually going to lean forward slightly. So those of you who are doing this uh, standing, uh, adopt your standing practice.、Uh, feet shoulder width or wider, legs bent, arms rounded, and I will talk us through the seated practice for those of you、uh, who are trying doing this sitting down. So. We're seated, hips slightly higher than the knees, and I want you to try having a slight forward fold in your torso. That will help you to have the sacrum in line with the lower spine. Rest your arms in front of you. I like doing it with、uh, the back of my hand on my thighs and looking up. So we can actually do everything that we've done in our standing practice in this practice here. So we'll start with the feet. So feel the weight on the feet, even front back, weight over the bubbling well, even inside outside. That's what we get from saying crotch rounded. And so one way you can do that, even in sitting practice, is to rotate your Thigh bones out a little bit to get that feeling of crotch rounded. Last week we talked about relax, and to relax, as I understand the Chinese word that's translated as relax, is to open and extend the body, and that's what we're trying to do. So actually, let's go through our posture checks and connect that to. This action of relaxing. So feel the head pushing up, empty, lively, and at the same time feel your shoulder blades sinking down. So your shoulders are sinking, your head is rising. That will open and extend the neck. Now feel your waist relaxing. In other words, your hips 
are sinking down. And that should give you an open and extended feeling down the, down the back. And so now from the crown of your head to the base of your sitting bones, you've got this openness. Everything is connected. So now let's sink the chest and round the back by pulling out at the elbows, pulling at the shoulders, shoulder blades, and then the shoulders pulling at the spine. So that's opening and extending left, right. That should help us to actually relax our waist as well. That's two minutes. So the purpose of doing this relax practice is so that we actually can do two things. Relax helps us to be soft and relax helps us to sink. Being soft means being able to absorb uh, the energy of our opponent and deliver it back. It's neither stiff nor limp. And actually sinking, when we have our posture right, allows us to sink our natural breath. So feel your breath naturally sinking as you breathe in slowly through the mouth, th uh, through the nose, into your abdomen, and then breathing out again. That's three minutes. Let's just observe the breath for a few moments, and I'll stop talking and I'll let you check your body for the last 20 seconds. And come out of that practice. So we do this practice of relax, finding the breathing, getting our posture right when we're not moving in still practice so that we can take it into our moving practice. And so what I'd like you to try and do now is to take what you've just been doing, head, shoulders sinking, relax the waist, uh, rounding the back as we do the form as far as we've learned it together. So we'll do that a couple of times, the whole form as we've learned it. I'll give some cues uh, and then I'll ask Marion to model and I'll observe and uh, we'll do some review. Okay, so I'll start off going in the same direction as you if you're facing the screen. So we're starting in prepare. So the legs are straight but not locked. And this is also a form of standing practice. Do your checks, calm your mind. Opening, rotate and lift the arms, palm shoulder width all the way up to the height of the shoulders and then press down, shoulders, elbows, wrists, keeping the palm parallel to the ground. Finish with the palms in front of the hips. Grass bird's tail, ward off left, shift weight slightly to the left with body turning, open the right toe, right hand back a bit, left hand forward. Now right hand goes up, left hand comes in. As you step out, arms close root, and as you lift the left arm, weight goes forward, down with the right arm. Your closing posture, chest open more than square. You're looking to the side, left arm horizontal, right palm, Tiger's mouth at the left forearm center. Ward off right. Shift your weight slightly to the right with body turning. Turn the left foot in. Arms swing. Now shift your weight back to the left. Arms swing and rotate. Grab out to the left. Look over your left hand. Close and step. Root as the arms are closed. Keep shifting your weight forward. As the foot flattens and lift into ward off right. You're looking straight forward. Your torso is tilted forward. Your head is up. Roll back. Swing, rotate. Both arms rotate as your waist rotates to the corner. Now sit back. And at the same time as you're sitting, you are doing a swing with the waist. Arms to the other corner. 
your finish, check that you have crotch rounded so that your left toe is in line with your left foot and your right uh, toe and knee is aligned, left foot as well. Press, close the right arm, make a circle with the fingertips of the right arm as you close the right arm in and then shift your weight forward, press out, up a little bit. Push, flatten the palms, square the chest. Now sit back your weight, pull back, palms horizontally almost to the back, sit, palms vertical, push with the legs, waist forward, push out with the arms. Final position, looking straight forward, head up, chest squared, palms vertical, arms slightly sinking. Single whip, sit back the weight, flatten the palm. Now, separate the palms, pull all the way around, close the right toe to the corner, come back fingertips facing each other make a hook to the back corner left fingertips to forearm now as you step out into a bow stance behind you lift the left arm to 45 degrees left arm rotates as the foot flattens with the weight shift and push out into a strike your final position you're in a bow stance 60 percent in the front 40 percent in the back make sure your crotch is rounded Head is pointing in the same direction as your left foot, so your nose and your left toe are in a line looking over the tiger's mouth of your left hand. We'll do that again. I'll not talk as much, and we'll try to connect all those things together. And actually, I think I will go in this direction for a change. Actually, I'll face, yeah, let's go in this direction. Prepare. Opening, rotate and lift. Breathe in. Press down, breathe out. Grassbird's tail, ward off left, shift. Open the toes, big circle with the arms. Close as you step out and root with the heel, then lift with the left arm, press down with the right. Ward off right, shift your weight to the right, toe to the right. Now grab to the left, close step, root, shift forward, warding off right. Roll back, both arms rotate as they swing to the right corner. Sit back your weight as they swing. Arms don't change much, coming down a bit to the left corner. Press. Make a big horizontal circle with the fingertips of the right arm as you compress the balloon in front of your chest. As you come forward, the balloon expands, pressing out. Push. Flatten the palms. Chest squared. Sit back. Palms in front of the chest. Pushing out to the straight direction. Single whip, sit back, flatten the palms. Pull, arms separate. Now they go all the way to the left as the right foot closes in. They come back, fingertips to fingertips. Hook, step out, lift the arms, rotate and push out. That's single whip. So um, I'm going to just uh, call out a few things that I've noticed uh, that some of us are doing, not everybody. Um, the first is when we start in push, the posture when we're in push is the torso angle. I want you to observe in this bow stance that the, there's a straight line from my shoulders to my hips to my ankle. So my torso is forward. Some of us tend to be more vertical like this. So I, I'd like us to focus and uh, it, sometimes it's good if you can get uh, somebody else in the house to, to, to have a look at you or look at yourself in the mirror to see if you have the right uh, angle. One of the reasons why, the, the, the martial art reason for this uh, is so that if somebody pushes you, you can absorb the energy. So if you have somebody that you can ask to if you're in this position, ask them to just push on your hands. And if they push, see if 
the energy goes straight into your back leg. If it doesn't, if you find yourself going backwards, you're not tilted forward enough. If you're tilted forward enough, the energy will just go straight down your spine into your back foot. The other reason why it's important for us to be in this position, and it's the same position that we end up when we've done press, which is this posture. When we go into push, there's a tendency to actually lean back when we go backwards and then go forward. So if, if we are quite upright, we flatten our palms and we go back, there's a tendency to lean back and then lean forward again. You do want to reduce your lean slightly as you go back, but you always want to retain this fold forward uh, at, the, at the front of the waist. So that's something on uh, just the starting position. So let us review um, single whip. Uh, and as I said last time, there are three parts. And let's just go through the footwork um, uh, of single whip first in the three parts. So we started, we're in a right bow stance, shift the weight almost all the way back onto the left leg. There is some weight still on your right heel. You still have this push support between your feet. Now turn the right foot as far as it'll go and shift back your weight. Then step out into a bow stance in the other direction. So essentially what we're doing is we're going from a bow stance on these two blue lines changing to a bow stance on these two blue lines. One of the things I've noticed that some of us uh, are, have an issue with, and it's, it is quite challenging, is let's say we have a good bow stance here. We come around and we step out, but we only step center line two sides here. We don't step wide enough into a bow stance. So when you step out here, make sure that you step shoulder width apart and then go forward. So let's practice that together. When we shift back and we shift onto the right leg, when I say pivot on the ball, what's making that pivot happen is actually my hips turning. The waist leads the limbs. So actually it's this waist turn to the corner which is making my foot rotate. So let's just do that together a couple of times. So I sit back my weight, I turn my foot in, even if I don't turn all the way, that's okay. As I turn my hips from the one corner to the other corner, that will make my foot pivot. The next thing is what happens when we step. So sit back the weight, pivot on the right heel. The hips turn, the body turns, which pivots the foot. Now I'm going to pick up my left foot and step out and root the heel. When my foot flattens, what flattens my foot is my weight moving forward. Then my knee bends. What makes my knee bend is my weight moving forward. So uh, thanks to Judith for uh, reminding me of this. When we step out, it's not just that we put the foot down. We're actually pushing with the back leg the right leg is flattening the foot and then bending the knee. So let's practice that together. And so we'll do all three things that I've been mentioning. First, sit back the weight, pivot on the right heel as far as it will go, 135 degrees if you can. The body turns, the hip turns to the corner which pivots on the left ball. Step out wide enough for a bow. Now use the weight shifting to flatten the foot and bend the knee. And you're ending with your torso vertical. Again, we're 60-40 going in the direction of our front foot. And in fact, with this one, when we start, we're actually leaning forward because we've done a push. Sit back the weight. Turn the right toe through 135 degrees if you can. Sit back the weight, turn the hips to the other to the corner, which pivots the heel. Step wide enough for a bow stance. With weight shifting, flatten the foot and bend the knee. So that's the footwork. 
we'll come back and put everything together with the footwork, but the next thing I wanted to uh, just spend a little bit of time on is the R movements. So um, actually, I will just face forward, and I will mirror you. Um, so I'm imagining you're facing the screen. Everybody I can see is facing the screen. Uh, so this would be, if, you're, if I'm mirroring you, this would be your left arm. So you remember when we were doing the waist turns, if I just have my arms in front of my straight out, I can turn at the waist, in other words, the lower back, my hips don't move, but my arms move. So I call, this is swing. Uh, Martha Young calls it swing. Uh, this version is synchronized swing, so the arms are synchronized to the chest. I think of it as the zombie swing, right? Because you're going along like a zombie. Your arms are just out in front of you. We want to practice the non-synchronized. So start with your arms to the left. Your chest is, uh, sorry, to the right, your right. Chest is to the right corner. Right arm is straight out. Left arm is in front of you, so your left forearm and your right arm are both pointing to the side. Now, move your chest to the other corner. The arms come around, and they finish up in the other position. So one arm is straight. The, both the forearms are parallel. And if you look at your hands, you can see that they're offset, right? So one is in front of the other. Let's start again. So we're starting here. Chest goes first, pulls the arms around and you're ending with the arms on the other side. Now I can come back to where I started. So chest goes, brings the arm along, and to here. The reason we call it non-synchronized, let's combine those two, is the chest is always ahead of the arms. So chest moves, arms follow, chest comes back, now the arms come back. So start with the arms offset, both forearms, parallel to the front of the room, chest moves, arms come around, comes back. So to the left and back to the right. To the left and back to the right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, show you and we're going to practice how we do it how we apply it specifically in single whip. This is the general one. So we start with arms to the right, go to the left. Now, as I come back, take the left arm, fingertips to fingertips, coming back, make a hook with the right arm, left fingertips to right forearm center. Start again here. Swing to the left, coming back, fingertips to fingertips, make a hook with the right. Left arm is more or less horizontal, fingertips to forearm center. And one more time. Swing, non-synchronized, coming back, fingertips to fingertips, make a hook, and make a ward off shape with your left arm. So that is the, the swing in the first part of single whip. So let's apply that to the movement. So I'm not mirroring you, so let's just do this together. I'll, I'll practice in this direction so you can see me. We started in push. Uh, you can see the, um, actually, let me come closer to the camera. My, my palms are parallel. So in push, my palms are parallel. As I shift back my weight and start turning, you can see I get this offset. And it's this offset that separates my palms. But at this part of single whip, my forearms are still parallel. So from push, sit back the weight, arms flatten. Now start turning, arms separate, they come around to the left, and they come back. Again, we're in push. Sit back, separate the palms, keep pulling with the left hand, comes around all the way to the left. Now, fingertips to fingertips, make a hook with the right hand, and the left arm is in a ward off. 
Okay, and relax. Just a quick comment. Um, one of the good exercises uh, for you uh, is actually to watch me and observe where I do things wrong. So I will say, do something in a particular way. I may not do it that way because you know my, my form's got all sorts of mistakes in it. So when you notice me doing something that doesn't seem right, check your own practice. Like, is, is that the same or different as mine? And do feel free to ask because it may well be that I say one thing and do another uh, and I'm confusing people. But looking is also a form of practice. Okay. The next thing that I want to focus on here as we wrap this up is the third part of single whip. So we've come around to here. So we'll just do the, the third part of single whip. So I'm, most of my weight is on my right leg. The uh, right foot is pointing to the front left corner. I've got a hook to the front right corner. And I've got the arm here. My two feet are parallel. What's going to happen is, actually get, me on, get on my lines here. I'm going to bring my foot in and step out as I lift my left arm into fo to 45 degrees. As my weight shifts forward and my foot flattens, I'm going to rotate my arm. So my left arm is going to rotate. As I keep moving my weight forward, I'm going to strike out, my arm's going to straighten a little bit, and my knee's going to bend. So we'll start in that posture again. So left toe to the front left corner, right hook to the front right corner. Uh, sorry, yeah, both feet are to the uh, front left corner. Step with the left foot into a bow stance. Left arm comes up to 45 degrees. As the foot flattens through body shifting, rotate the arm, the arm comes to the side, and then push out. Again. So we start in this posture. As I step out, my left arm comes up to 45 degrees. As I shift my weight forward, foot flattens, it comes to the side, and then I push forward. Now, one of the things that I want you to observe or, or, or be careful about is the way we teach it, we break it down into bits, right? So, okay, rotate the arm and then push out. But uh, if we want to deliver energy, it's in a circle. Everything is smooth. So, actually, this is one smooth movement. So that actually when I'm doing this movement here, Actually, it might be easier if I do it from here. My arm comes to the comes forward, and then uh, there's really no good angle to do this. Let me let me try this one again. So as I step out, arm up, arm rotates to the side. Now here, it's not a straight line, two parts. It's not rotate, push. It's not rotate, push. It's a smooth movement. So it's actually a curve. My, my left palm follows a curve. Any questions before we put that all together? Yes, Yukiko. Um, do you rotate only arm or do you rotate from west? Yes. There is a, as always, we say that there is a, you know, the waist leads the limbs. So there will be a slight opening of the waist here, but not very much. Uh, and the reason for that is when we step out here, it's mostly just connecting out. So we're connecting out and we're not delivering much energy. We're connecting and then we're delivering the energy here. If I, so, so let's, talk about what would happen if I did. If I rotated too far here, then I'd have a big movement coming back here to get my chest into the final position. So you will see that people have a slight opening of the chest at the end because they open slightly here, but it's not very big. 
I see. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? They, and they don't all have to be as good as Yukiko's question. Yes, Judith, please. Yes, um, I, I didn't know if you were about to be done or if you were about to address this, but when you first began with push, you commented about how we're in the lean position. And then when we're at the end, we're in the vertical with the torso. Uh, would you comment on a, what point that shift to the vertical happens so that we can know exactly when we're trying to do it? Yes. Uh, that one uh, is very easy to answer. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so um, let me let me just see what my body does, and we can compare notes, right? So here, so we we're definitely in a lean here. We're in a slight lean here. At this point, my torso is there's a slight fold here in order to make uh, the, the 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 leg support work. But actually, it's a slight fold in the direction of my supporting leg. And so I don't, I'm not going, I'm not straightening from here to here. So uh, let me do some uh, asking around uh, and I'll come back to you next week. We might talk about it Thursday. Maybe we'll put it on. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Let us. Just practice all of that together one time, or maybe twice. So we're in push, right bow stance, right foot forward, both arms pushing out, shoulder height, torso tilted, slight bend in the arms so that your palms are vertical. S single whip, sit back weight, palms flatten. Pull, separating the arms, right toe turns through 135 degrees to the corner, as the arms come back, waist leads the limbs, pivot on the heel so both feet are to the corner, make a hook. Now step out to the bow stance, left arm up, left arm rotates to the side and then forward. And the final position, your torso is vertical, your chest and your hips are both open, uh, probably a bit more than corner, uh, your head is up, Torso is vertical, looking over the tiger's mouth in the straight direction. Okay, that single whip. So today we're going to do um, raise hand, step forward. It allows us to introduce uh, a new step, a new stance, which is empty stance. So let's just talk a little bit about empty stance. Um, there are three things that are common to all the stances that we practice. And so whether it's the stance, parallel stance or both stance, the feet are either pointing in the straight direction or 45 degrees, or in this case, both are in the straight direction. We want to feel weight over the bubbling well, and we want to have our crotch rounded. In other words, weight even on the inside and outside of our feet, toes and knees in a line. We have the same thing with the empty stance. So let's do the empty stance and I'll point out some of the differences. So one foot to the corner, the other foot's going to be in the straight direction, but here it's going to be center line two sides. So this yellow line goes past my back heel. My front heel is going to be on the other side of this line. And so this is uh, the empty stance footwork. How long is the empty stance? Left, right, it's center line. Lengthwise, it's long enough so that you can keep your hip over your back foot. Front leg is straight but not locked and all your weight is over the front foot. When you are in this posture, you want 70% of your weight on the back foot 30% on the front. So 30% on the front means if you push and support, you can feel that there is uh, uh, your left, your your front foot is connected to the ground and is pushing back on the foot in the back. The other thing that I want to point out here is our body setting. So 
first when we sink our weight make sure that your hip is over your back leg so it's not back like this and it's not forward either it's straight up and down over the back leg heel the bring the whole heel is pressing down so weight over the bubbling well on the back leg back toe and knee in a line crotch rounded and now you're going to tilt your torso in the direction of the front foot slightly so you have a slight torso tilt here we can move from one empty stance to the next and so let's just go from one to the other and actually let's just re recall um, when we were in a bow stance and we wanted to turn through 90 degrees we shifted our weight back slightly turned the, the foot in through 90 de uh, 45 degrees more than shoulder width between my feet so i bring the foot in and step out into a bow stance root heel ball toe bend knee we're going to do something very similar with our empty stance so start in an empty stance so i'm going uh i'm i'm in a, a left empty stance so weight is on the back on the right leg torso folded forward slightly all the way the full heel pressure ball is off the ground shift my weight back slightly turn the heel through 45 degrees shift my weight forward i've got more than shoulder width bring my foot in step out one line two sides heel so i'm in an empty stance i'm going to just keep going so turn shift weight back slightly turn the right toe through 44 or the front toe through 45 degrees shift the weight onto the front foot in the direction of the foot bring the foot in step out center line two sides heel touch again shift weight back slightly pivot on the heel bring the weight in step out center line two sides heel touch slight fold at the front so this is the empty stance with the heel there are two ways of doing the empty stance now next week we're going to learn a movement which actually has the other one this week we're going to do an empty stance heel touch next week it's going to be empty stance ball touch so let me show you the ball touch as well so let us begin again so we've got the supporting leg pointing to the corner front leg straight but not locked now i'm going to touch with the ball of my foot the whole ball and nothing but the ball so i'm not touching my heel it's just the ball i'm going to fold forward at the at the hips in the direction of the front supporting foot and this is my empty stance on the ball i can do it on the other side so try the other foot behind you sink your weight hip over the back leg leg forward straight but not locked push in push down with the ball of the foot you've got 30 percent on the back leg uh sorry 70 percent on the back 30 percent on the front folded forward at the torso now we can actually change footwork from one to the other and the way we change footwork from one to the other is if we're in a ball, if we're touching with the ball, we can just shift our weight slightly back and touch with the heel. Change to the ball, shift weight back slightly to the ball, to the heel, to the ball, and do it on the other side. You're starting on the ball, to the heel, to the ball, to the heel, to the ball. Okay, we'll do more about the various kinds of ways of putting this into footwork next week. But now I want to introduce the movement today, which is raise hands, step forward. So let me demonstrate it once. I shall do it in a couple of directions and then we'll break it down. So I finished single whip. So I'm in a bow stance, left bow stance. raise hands step forward i'm going to shift my weight back slightly pivot on the left heel 
bring the left foot to corner. Bring my weight to the left, release the hook. Arms start coming in. Pick up the front foot, heel touch. As I establish my root, I then bring the arms together and finish in this posture. This is raise hands. So uh, let's do it in this direction. Actually, no, we'll do it in this direction. Mm. Okay. Single whip, two raise hands, shift weight back slightly, bring the left toe in, shift the weight to the left, release the hook, bring in the foot to heel touch, empty stance, one line, two sides. As you shift your weight forward, turn the waist, chest goes to the corner, arms are in front of the body on either side of the center line. So let us do the footwork and then we'll do the arm movements. The footwork is pretty straightforward. We're starting in a single whip, left bow stance, torso is vertical. Shift weight back slightly because we're going to turn the toe through only 45 degrees. Shift the weight to the left. If you look at the distance between your feet, it's more than shoulder width. So you know you've got to bring the foot in, step out, center line two sides heel touch again so we're in a bow stance shift weight back slightly turn the toe to the corner shift the weight all the way to the left pick up the left foot step in and then out heel touch empty stance and at the end i want you to be able to feel that push and support you've rooted with the heel of the right foot one more time Shift weight back, turn the heel 45 degrees, bring the right foot in, step out, center line two sides, empty stance. Now we'll do the arms. So we're starting in a bow stance. Shift your weight back. The first thing that happens is as you turn the left toe in, the arms just follow the body turning. As you shift weight back, release your hook. Your arms still haven't gone anywhere. Then as you step forward, the arms are going to rotate back and rotate forward and come together. In order to practice this, um, I'm going to uh, mirror you. Uh, since I'm just going to face the screen, I'm not going to go from one side to the other. Hopefully, it won't be too confusing. If it is, I apologize. Uh, for some for some folks, this is terrible. Mirroring is terrible stuff. So what I want us to do together is stand, start with your arms about 90, 90 degree between your arms. You're going to bring the, bring the arms back and they're going to come forward. So just in a plane, back and forward. So you're going to make a circle. That's a wide circle and it comes forward in the middle. So open and close. Open and close. This is not the final movement, but this is just to get us there. One of the things I want us to be very clear about is when you open your arms, be careful not to open your arms more than the side, right? Because then you can't be sinking your chest anymore. So most of this rotation here is around your elbow. It's not your arms, it's the elbow. And so we're going to make a shape which is out and in, out and in. Okay. So let's do this again. So we're gonna start with the right hand slightly higher than the left now so if you're mirroring me so this would be on your this would be your, your right hand in the mirror so we go up and we come together circle and come together so you can see that your right hand is a little bit higher than your left open and close open 
and close. Now in this open and close, I haven't moved my waist. And so my hands are in the same position, but actually we're going to turn our chest so that our hands are offset. So that's the third part of this thing. So we're going to start, right hand slightly higher than the left, open, and turn your chest to the left. So rotate at the left so that your left hand is ahead of your right. Oh, sorry, your right hand is ahead of your left. Do that again a couple of times. So open, close, turn the chest. Open, close, turn the chest. Open, close, turn the chest. And so if I, let me see, yes, I do have a beautiful assistant. Let me ask Susan if she'll join me for a moment. And I just want to show you the, the use of this and that will hopefully make some sense of the, the details of where we are. Okay, so um, I'm going to imagine that Susan is going to punch uh, with her left. I'm going to get this arm and I'm going to strike her upper arm with my right upper arm. And let's come in a little bit. So Susan's going to come in. I'm going to connect and I'm going to strike her upper arm with my upper. Actually, if I do this for real, I'm going to strike her elbow with the center of my forearm. At which point, if, I'm, if I keep holding on here, I break her elbow. So that is what this movement actually does. And let's turn through this direction just a little bit. Okay, so let's do that again. So Susan comes in, I connect, I'm going to let go of this hand. So I have to live with Susan, but I'm going to do a waist turn here. And the waist turn is going to make the arm movement. So actually, it's not just an arm movement, it's a waist movement. So it's the waist movement that actually does this application. Okay, thank you, Susan. Yeah, I, I pay Susan by the bruise uh, on her arm. Um, so, okay, so let's do that together. And what I want you to take from that is when we open and close, the relative positions of the arms are you're striking your opponent's elbow with the center of your forearm. So your fingertips are actually going to be quite high. They're probably going to be higher than your shoulder. They may be about nose height. And your other palm is holding on here. And so both, if you look at the shape of your palms, both of them are tilted slightly down. One is ahead of the other, but both of them are along your center line. So my chest is open, but they're along the center line of my chest this way. So let's practice that together a few times. We'll start from single whip and I am not mirroring you. So we'll just talk our way through this one. So one, shift back weight with body turning, move the left toe to the corner, arms don't change. Two, shift weight to the left, release the hook, arms start opening as you step in, step out and root. So you're rooting with the, the heel. Now that you've got a root with the heel, turn your chest, the right arm comes forward and the left arm gets to its final position. Do it in this direction. Shift back weight. Uh, I'll come over here. So one, shift weight. Two, turn in the foot. Three, shift back and root, close. Again, that was a bad count. Shift weight, turn the toe in, one. Two, open, begin opening the arms, release the hook. Step into your empty stance, root, 
Now finish by with a chest turn, hands close, hands either side of center line, left fingertips about eye height, uh, right fingertips about eye height, left fingertips pointing at right forearm center. We're in single whip. Shift back, so one, shift back weight slightly, turn the left toe in, arm doesn't change. Two, start shifting your weight to the left, release the hook. Three, arm circle back a bit, start closing, root with your right foot. Four, turn the chest, finish the movement. Again, from end of single whip. One, turn the left toe in. Two, sit onto the left, release the hook. Three, start circling, step out, center line to side, root. Three, turn the chest. Single whip. One, sit back, weight, turn the left toe 45 degrees. Two, sit back, release the hook. Three, start closing the arms, root. Four, close. Now, let me just point out a few things and feel free to practice along or just watch. Um, so one is here. If you, if you look at the relative heights of my hands, you'll see that my left hand is lower than my right hand because my left hand started in a push at shoulder height, my right arm is to do a throw a, a strike to the throat so this arm is higher than this arm and they're going to stay in that relative position as i go through this movement so one shift back turn the toe in two release the hook so my right arm is still higher than my left three shift back start closing center line two sides now i've done i've rooted here now i'm going to turn my chest as I do this final movement, what I'd like you to do is to not turn your hips. It's just a waist turn. Because if you turn the hips, you're actually going to close your crotch. Let's do that together. Can I ask a question about that rotation? Yes. Um, Sometimes you've referred to it as a chest turn, and sometimes you said turn at the waist. And I'm yes. not quite clear. I'm not saying this very clearly, but maybe you can get the question. Yes, no, absolutely. I, I, I quite understand the confusion because uh, it, it, I, I suppose it's confusing terminology. Uh, it's where the rotation happens versus where you see it. The rotation happens in the waist, in other words, the lower back. Where you see it is in the chest. Okay, I feel like I can rotate my chest without, well, I might be wrong. I mean, it, 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 there's different places along the spine that yes. can turn, and it's possible for me to more or less turn up up higher than my chest and still have my shoulders rotate. Uh, okay. Maybe so not. when so what so when I say with you know chest turn, what I'm referring to is a waist turn, which is now of course our whole spine is connected and you know everything will turn. Uh, yeah. right. But I believe, you know, the way I understand it, most of the rotation is in the, the lower spine in these cases. Now, sometimes when I say with body turning, the waist turns and so, for example, here, if I come here, my waist is turning in space, oh. but my hips are also turning at the same time, right? So sometimes a waist turn is at the same time as a hip turn, and sometimes it's separate. So you can do both. You can you can turn like this, which we do, for example, in um, rollback, right? So we're we're not moving our hips at all. Or in this case, 
when I shift, I'm actually turning my hips and my chest at the same time. So there's actually not a turning in the lumbar spine. Is that making sense, Rima? Yes, I think it might be my strange hypermobile body that I can actually rotate my um, upper, like I, I can keep this pretty, <laughs> but that's probably not what you're trying to do. Yes. So you're, you're rotating, you're just keeping your hips still and rotating from here and that this whole box yes so it's really it's it's a lower rotation yes okay okay yeah. tessie i see you have your hand up do you have a question no okay good um so let us uh just practice everything through from the beginning uh and then we'll call it good so let us start in prepare Facing towards the front. Opening. I'm not going to call any cues. Crossbird's tail, ward off, left. Ward off, right. Roll back. Press. Push. Single whip. Raise hands, step forward. And stop. So we'll stop there. And um, if you have any further questions, and I, I know that Sam has something that we're going to discuss after class, everybody's welcome to stay after class. I remind you of Marion's practice tomorrow at uh, three o'clock, where she'll be going through what we've done today. And uh, with that, thank you, everybody. Let's close class. And Rita will model the salute for us. Good pronunciation. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. See you next week.